Alrighty, so we got we woke up on a ship. We are being attacked by evil Sith, because of course we're Republic Jedi side lights. <coughs> cool, we'll sneeze ten seconds into an episode. Cool, love it. Great, 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 great. <laughs> we get attacked. Apparently there's a Jedi named Bastila on the ship. She has a battle meditation power that makes it basically like her side can be more likely to win wars, essentially, which seems like a pretty powerful Jedi power. So that's probably why we were under attack and abruptly ambushed and all that. So we escaped with Karth. We're the only survivors from the entire ship, seemingly, except for Bastila herself, who's presumably alive somewhere. So we're on a planet that is Sith controlled and under quarantine. Hmm. Time is <laughs> topical, huh? <laughs> so we're a quarantined planet. We want to get off this planet, but we don't. We don't know how to break the quarantine and how to escape this place. But also, uh, we need to find Bastila somewhere on here and try not to get murdered and whatnot. And the backstory is that there is Darth Revan and Darth Malak. Revan was the master. Malak was the apprentice. They were Jedi, but then turned to the dark side when they went off to fight the Mandalorians, apparently. Uh, and Revan was killed in a strike force by Bastila, and Malak is probably who attacked our ship and is the big naughty boy. Just the naughtiest boy. So this is our current HQ at this point in the game. Ooh, this locker had some stuff in it. This workbench. You just upgrade my shit. I can upgrade this. I have a prototype driver blade. Wow. Does one to ten damage plus one. That's pretty good. Ew, ooh, and it has a critical threat range of nineteen to twenty. Yes, I would like this. Thank you. My current weapon did like one to twelve with a twenty twenty crit threat, which you might think one to twelve. That's better than one to ten. Sure, it's a higher top peak technically. But this damage bonus of plus one means, on average, every single dice roll I have is just better. So it takes my it takes my damage range from two to eleven instead of uh, one to twelve. So it makes it a little more consistent. But the big nice part is definitely that crit threat right there. Nineteen to twenty means I have double the crit spread, and my I also have the ability to increase the crit spread myself. So all the better, right? Oopsie. So a vibration spell cell damage bonus slashing one. So there's plus there's two damage right there. Let's see. If I get a Durasteel bonding alloy, I can have attack bonus one damage slashing one. And then energy projector attack bonus two damage slashing one. So I can ultimately get plus three attack and plus three damage. So attack always means hit chance because we're using D and D terms. So this is what I have for now. I didn't even know I had that. I'm definitely switching to that. Now it's even better with the plus two. Yeah. If we want to review real quick, if I even can't feats. Beats his X. There we go. So I have a plus one attack bonus with all melee weapons. And a few other nice things here. What was the, uh... Doubles the crit threat range of range... Oh, that's the... Doubles the crit threat range of melee attacks. So if it was a 20, it would become 19 to 20. So now when I use critical strike, it'll become 17 to 20, right? That's I'll have four. I'll already have that 20% hit crit chance. So that Viper Blade is actually a significant upgrade for me for that reason alone. Yes, thank you. Much appreciated. Do I have any clothes? Nope. No, no equipment changes, but I got a vibro blade, which, as far as I'm aware, I think that might be what they were using in Last Jedi in that throne room scene. I think vibro blades are meant to basically be the one type of weapon that you can use that can make contact with a lightsaber without like just melting away and just getting your ass kicked immediately. I think that's more or less the premise. The first and maybe even only place I've ever heard of them is these two games, Kotor one and two, and I, and I guess. Uh, Old Republic or something. 
But I think they have larger significance too. Let's get out of here. Select your party members. One of it, yeah. Easy with us by default. Here we go. The beginning of our non-linear exploration based. Okay, you alien scum. Stuff. Everybody get up against the wall. This is a raid. <laughs> That's how we sit deal with smart mouth aliens. Now the rest of you get up against the wall before I lose my temper again. Hey, what's this? Humans hiding out with aliens? They're Republic fugitives. Attack! Wow. What a grand cover we have so far. Good job. Okay. <laughs> okay. So yeah, the Sith are racist. Just straight up. This is not exactly... This isn't exactly a secret. Like, the Sith were always meant to be an analog to fascism and Nazis in particular. And it's really, really noticeable it, once somebody points it out to you, how like when you're watching all of uh, the original movies and stuff, how like the Republic is this federation of all these different races and groups and, and like all these diverse strange aliens and creatures. And the Sith is just a bunch of white humans that are like dressed like Nazis. It's not particularly subtle how there's like almost, there's basically no alien presence in the entirety of the Sith. Calling them aliens is hilarious because they just, I guess it's just a term for non-humans, but like we're not exactly on like, well, I was gonna say Earth, but you know, wherever humans are from in Star Wars, which I'm realizing I have no actual idea where that would be. I am going to start with a nice grenade and you are going to start with a nice shooty tooty shooty shooty okay and then after that I'll move on to attacking that guy but I want to see if I can cause a little group damage here there we go wow there <laughs> I don't know if that's just like a loop of gener of generic alien dialogue or if they actually recorded full alien dialogue for every conversation. But holy crap, they uh them fascists are real combustible, apparently. <laughs> like, they went up like a spider web. <laughs> Alright. Won't someone come searching for this patrol? Not exactly a saints around here, huh? Just have a talent for hiding bodies. Definitely deserve it, though. They, uh... Just out here shooting people for talking back. You talk back, you're dead. Dead. Goodbye. Hey there, what, well, what, what where you're walking? I just clean those floors. Uh, sorry, I didn't know. Well, all right then, no hard feeling. My name's Kadir. I'm the janitor for this building. You must be the new tenant here, right? Eh? Never thought they'd rent that abandoned apartment. Hmm. You look like an off-worlder. What happened? You get stuck here because of the quarantine? Can't see any other reason someone would want to rent that old apartment. I want to ask you some questions. Don't know how much I can tell you, but seeing as how you're new here, I guess I can try and help you out. Tell you about Terrace. Decent enough place to live, I guess, except for the lower levels. That's where the swoop gangs hang out. Just stay in Upper City and you'll be fine. You also might want to check out the cantina. I used to go there when I was younger. Good place to get a drink and find out what's going on in the Upper City. 
Where's the cantina? You just keep following the apartment complex ring until you come to the elevator. It'll take you out to the upper streets near them. And from there, just head south a ways. You can't miss it. Don't know how much I can tell you. What do you think of the Sith in this quarantine? Not much of an issue for me, you know. I ain't never left Tars, and they ain't never gonna. A lot of other folks are sure riled up about it, but I don't really know much about it. I prefer to keep to myself, mostly. But there's plenty of people at the cantina who'll be more than happy to tell you what they think about the Sith and their quarantine. They're doing something strange here, whatever this quarantine's for. They're using it just to keep people from coming off of this planet. Not any, like, internal quarantining to, like, fight whatever disease or problem there apparently is. But judging from the Sith, I'm, there might not be a disease at all. It might just be them exerting control for the sake of it, or they're after something on the planet. I'll be going now. I should get back to work anyway. Uh, I'll probably see you around. I'm, I'm here most of the time. The building doesn't clean itself, you know. I think about that part of uh, Rise of Skywalker on that one planet that where the Sith are like interrogating everybody and going door to door. Like that was that was probably a quote unquote quarantine for all that amounts to. They have alien restriction laws here. Whatever that means. No problem. Don't mind me. Just being a nasty boy. Take it where you can find it. Oh, it's like an R2 head. Hello. Ethorian. I am a criminal. I mean, did pick scoundrel class. Warren. There's the upper city. There doesn't seem to be a lot of other characters around here. Got it. A Twi'lek. I'm immediately just a bad person for this. Dolpa <laughs> Pleased to meet you, Laram. My name is Varlo Thu. What's so great about these energy shields? Ita patisa batua kacha tutong bagra sha kon ticha kum chuba kaha chopa chawa chwish yunku jodo jid bunga rantang ta kum jus tak miki grabul mogo kachi chu ita bodunga tolba bank wale oganda nalu chuchut mogi sha punga bola wana chikne and I can tell you from experience that they aren't any good at all against a simple vibroblade. That's why the Republic has been training soldiers in hand to hand and melee combat. So here's our explanation for why people are using swords and stuff like that. Is that there's this like 
scourge of energy shields that are like resistant to laser fire and so on. So people are just whipping out straight up swords to stab people with. Like, oh yeah, you've got an energy bubble? Well, I'm now your guts are on my giant sword blade. Where'd this technology come from? <laughs> Mule-slimo-poda-da-da-nanga-kumbist-mule-ra-best-chi-gra-tug-lo-da-bograshi-onni-un-kumba-chintum-mu-chuba-lo-da-di-ta-kun-i-ta-pati-so-ba-tua-
Johnny yon tun chichi i dat wana. Kava vol pa mulje gumana? Why do you have a kiosk set up here? We eat a non dieta. What a yuma wama huhu nandetik. Ah, shotung ni patoga. Wano kuzbe ching palamule tonke. You mentioned something about illegal aliens living here. Tag, bis tu bunko cookie mac panka. Ching para chiska mule tunarana nu prata. Dunko sicha duma wamama tus keva toma. Nisha julorcha kinguno bule rajikun. Chan shak bulara umra chiska duchi. On Chubanjishka Yanki, Titoke Gratung Kun Chichakun King Kachachonobra Bogra Walano Dumbacha Nechichuna Chubaching Lorda Itakun. We tam Boragatong Munira Ashanturung ni Napotata Twangachun Tize Igrutu Haga Jijiwa. What a juma wanna who wanna who who not take? Ha! You wouldn't want any squatters around here, right, Karth? Karth? <laughs> so aliens aren't allowed in large amounts of terrace because of the racism. But uh, you know, people try to make money, and since this place is a real piece of shit, apparently, even though it looks pretty, it actually looks kind of nice. But whatever. Uh, since this place is apparently a real piece of shit, you, uh, only can really rent it to the aliens, even though they're not supposed to be here in the first place. Aren't you worried about getting caught? Chi gratu, loda, bograshi, onion kumba, jin tomba mochuba. Loda nita kun, ita patisa batua, kacha tutung. Bograsha kun ticha kum. Chuba kaha, chopa, chawa chuish, yunku. Jodo jid bungaran tam mucha shak pakhat ki nono dama paole rachikun since the sith took over they felt the same so that means that terrace already sucked even before the sith got here and they did the, they pulled the shit let me see what you got for sale achuta wonga kun bis dolpi kikuyana dong patugas maktelia they got med packs, computer spikes, military suit. If you have medium armor, you get that six defense bonus. Max dexterity bonus plus three. That means that your because your dexterity gives you increased defense via evasiveness. And uh, if it goes beyond a certain point, then if your armor is too strong, it restricts your dex bonus. So if you have a dex bonus of plus four and you put this on, you only get three of that bonus instead of four. And the higher your, the stronger your armor gets, usually the shittier the dex bonus cap gets. I think my dex bonus is only like, what, two? I'm not gonna blow any mines right now. So whatever I can get armor-wise is like the way to go. But no, right now what I'm interested in is that shield. Lots of blades and weapons. Sonic pistol, what does that do? So ion blaster does ion damage. Ion's a big deal, because it's supposed to be more effective against shields, as was mentioned before. So it'll take people's shields down quickly, but not be great against their health underneath. So it's actually the same split in Halo, where you have energy weapons, and you have bullet weapons, basically. Which are basically the human weapons and the covenant weapons. Uh, and you, 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 there was strategies built around like using one to take down an enemy's shield, and using the other one to like quickly like headshot them once their shield's down. Because they were differently capable in different situations. Don't know what sonic damage does. That's interesting. Squealers. These weapons deliver a high frequency jolt to the senses that can damage and potentially disorient an opponent. Ooh. So I think it leads to stuns? Or maybe just disorientation might just be like reduced evasion or reduced accuracy. Like it's a, usually like a debuff of some sort. Energy is pretty normal. Energy, yeah. Everything does physical or energy-based attacks. 
I think physical attacks skip shields altogether, whereas energy attacks have to break through their shields. And like Sonic probably also has to go through their shields, but it'll ultimately do like attacks that on a hit attribute damage dexterity. So it hurts the enemy's dexterity. That's what it is. So Sonic Pistol applies a debuff. That's some neat stuff. Sound dampening stealthy and it's stealth plus two. That's good shit too. An upgrade over what I have so far, where I just have a just a nothing. Yeah, I, I just have a normal stealth field generator. So I should get this if I ever get the money for it, but I have to get that to that point. Alright, so here up here was the energy shield. Uses, 5 out of 5. Deflection, electrical, 20 points. Duration, 200 seconds, or max damage taken. Charges, using this item consumes one charge. The item will automatically discard it after all the available charges are consumed. Items that have charges do not stack in inventory. When equipped and activated, these items project an energy shield around the wearer. The small power source can burn out when repeatedly stressed, requiring replacement of the entire unit. Wasteful. Alright. I did not remember this weapon. I, I didn't quite remember energy shields, although I did instantly recognize this icon, which looks like it's a shoulder... It looks like a shoulder pad. And now I remember why. It's because they don't... It's not just a passive... Like, I have a shield and it regenerates every fight. It's like, no, you have an item you can use to, to reduce incoming damage for a while. So you can, you turn this on during a big fight, and then you're good. But it is a consumable ultimately, like like these stimulants here and stuff like that, right? So I don't I don't think I'm gonna quite buy it right now because it's most of my money like on the spot. I also think I'm I think I'm gonna stop breaking into people's houses. I think I might make some some selfish dialogue choices and whatnot as this character going forward, but I don't know if I'm gonna continually break into people's houses if that's the character I really want to be. But yeah, I don't think I want to spend all my money on an energy shield right now. Now that I remember that it is a consumable. But we're gonna want to have them on hand for big bad fights. So I can turn that shit on and be in a better place. Hopefully we'll find some. For now, I'm anticipating probably a lot of dialogue. That's the same guy twice. Man. What's this? Another off-worlder? I didn't realize how many of you there were on Terrace until this Sith quarantine. I heard the Sith are sending salvage teams into the Undercity. I heard they're looking for Republic survivors to take prisoner. Why does that voice actor sound so familiar? Greetings and good day. On behalf of the new Sith rulers, I am programmed to encourage you to enjoy your stay on Taras. I am a cryptical droid programmed to provide information to everyone on Taras, citizens and visitors alike. Is there something I can do to serve you? What can you tell me about the Sith? The Sith are the new authority here on Taras. They seek to preserve the customs of our world, or so I am told. More than this I cannot say. May I be of any further service to you? Is there some way I can get a shuttle off this planet? I am afraid that is impossible. Taris is currently under a planet-wide quarantine. The Sith are allowing no one to arrive or leave, except on official Sith business. May I be of any further service to you? Do you know anything about the gangs in the lower city? The Swoop Gangs, which is a kind of hilarious name. The Taurus Tourism Board has issued a strong warning to all visitors to avoid the lower city. It is a violent and dangerous place you would do well to avoid. May I be of any further service to you? How come there's hardly any aliens around? Alien species have restricted access to the upper city. This is one of the most ancient traditions of Taras, and the Sith have promised to preserve such traditions. Of course, I have yet to see them arrest a single alien for traveling the upper city without a permit. May I be of any further service to you? Who do you work for? I am an employee of the Taras government, programmed to provide information and guidance to any who require it. May I be of any further service to you? It's actually a little remarkable how much this kind of resembles the Citadel, and this remem this resembles the Asari holograms that are all over the Citadel to, to sort of guide you around when you first get here. Uh, not now. Then if you will excuse me, I must continue my appointed rounds. It's, it's 
kind of funny. I, I, I do like how everything looks like Star Wars, but not like Star Wars. Like, there's R2-D2, but not R2-D2. That's like, that's a protocol droid, but not the ones we've seen before. And like, the the chrome dome guys on that ship were like, they were like, uh, they were stormtroopers, but not stormtroopers. Like, there was just enough subtle differences going on. I gotta say, this looks pretty nice. Uh, this is actually, this seems to be, a, like, roughly equivalent to what we were gonna get if I could get the PC version of this game running, except for the letterbox, well, well side boxing we have, where it's, like, 4x3-ish, but, like, this game's, like, anti, it's all anti-alias, like, you can see, like, there's lots, lots of smooth edges, and, like, it's, like, up -resed. so, like, there's, there's an upside to it being ported over, I guess, that we're noticing here, that's nice. Salvage doors are busy scanning the remains of this Republic escape pod. We wouldn't want to be seen around that, would we, Karth? But there's... There's our crash pod. We thankfully landed here, on this platform. And I guess he just dragged me over there, and we live there now, so... Really, Karth? Really? Like, I guess, I guess people are heavy and shit, so there's that. But, like, it seems like it's been hours or days, and you think the Sith are after us, right? It's like, that's our crash spot. That's where he took me to. The closest door in the entire city. I'm amazed we're alive. I'm completely amazed that we're alive. Alright, let's... Something seems to be bothering Karth. Maybe you should speak to him about it and see if you can get him to open up about it. Yes, what's on your mind? I'd like to know some more about you, Karth. Me? Well, I've been a star pilot for the Republic for years. Seen more than my share of wars. I fought in the Mandalorian Wars before all this started. But with all that, I've never experienced anything like the slaughter these Sith animals can unleash. Not even the Mandalorians were that senseless. My home world was one of the first planets to fall to Malak's fleet. The Sith bombed it into submission, and there wasn't a damn thing our Republic forces could do to stop them. You're talking like it's your fault, like you failed somehow. It shouldn't be my fault. I did everything I could. I followed my orders and did my duty. That that shouldn't mean I failed them. I, I didn't. Them? Do you mean the people of your home world? Yeah, no, I... That's not what I mean. I mean, I, I'm sorry, I'm not making much sense, am I? You probably mean well with your questions. I'm just not accustomed to talking about my past very much. At all, actually. I'm more used to taking action, keeping my mind focused on the business at hand. So let's just do that. If you have more questions, ask them later. Hmm. Livewire. He's on edge about a few things. That'll lead us somewhere. What is this? The Equipment Emporium. What an overly complicated, heavy door to have. But that's in character, I guess, for this place. Kebley Yurt. Hello there. I haven't seen you in my shop before. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Kebley Yurt. Welcome to the Equipment Emporium. You looking to buy some supplies? My shop's the largest one in all of Upper Terrace. Best selection on the planet. Whatever you need, I've got. Well, mostly. Mostly? What do you mean by that? The Sith confiscated all my heavy weapons and they impounded all my ships and swoop bikes. But I've still got a real nice selection, if you're interested. Let's see what you got for sale. Uh, just so you know, the prices on the items are our final. No bargaining here. This isn't a swap meet, okay? I only deal in top-notch stuff. Mmm. -hmm. Med packs for 40. I seem to remember them being 44 at the last place, but I could be wrong about that. Let's find the shield if she has one. See if I can. Oh, she does not have one. Permacrete detonator? This powerful detonator is extremely complicated. Only someone trained in it can could set and activate it. Sound dampening stealth field. This one's 200. I think he was charging me 220 for it before. Like, I can almost afford this one. Hmm. So I, I, I wish I'd kept better track of some of the 
prices on these things. Uh, you can buy infinite short swords for one. So you can always have a weapon if you ever run out of weapons completely. Double bladed sword. Vibro sword. 2 to 12. So if my current weapon has is 1 to 11, then this is 2 to 12. This is even better for the, with, while having the same crit threat range. But it's un I have upgraded mine. That one's not upgraded. Big two-handed weapons, if that's your jam. I don't think two-handed weapons actually attack more. They just have their own weapon stat as a result. Yeah, normal swords don't have the crit threat range. And this is six armor on light. Seven armor on medium. This would not be bad to have, but this stuff's generally pretty expensive. This one's really expensive, wow. Defense bonus of six while having a max bonus of four. Still quite the difference here. Oh, because this is medium. Right, so it has really high armor for a light armor piece. It's still it's incredibly expensive, though. 900. I'd probably be tempted to save up for this stealth generator. And by save up for, I mean probably just buy it now by selling something else. I'm sure I have something else I can just get rid of here. A combat suit. I don't think I want a long sword. Or a short sword for that matter. The vibro swords seem like they're more than enough. These don't have any value though. I guess that means they kind of don't have a reason to be sold. Blaster pistols. 40 each and I have a decent number of those. Blaster rifle is 1 to 8. Ion blasters 1 to 4. But yeah, on top of being having a bonus against shields, they have a bonus against droids. So when you go after droids, if you equip everyone with ion weapons, suddenly those droids are in deep shit. The main, di main difference here is you have to worry about whether people can specialize in pistols or rifles. Because if they can use a rifle, I don't see why you wouldn't just skip to that. This is 1 to 6. 1 to 6 at 23 meters, 1 to 8 at 28 meters, and, okay, the rifle also has double crit threat range, so I should switch, I should switch Karth to that immediately if he has the ability to use one. Alright. This might not be worth buying this early on, but I want to, I like the idea of having this super shield generator. There's a confirmation screen when you buy an expensive item just in case you're making a huge mistake, which I might be doing, but you know. Maybe that's my jam. You don't know me. Hey, Karth. Okay. Karth is dual wielding. Big question right off the bat. Yo, Karth. Uh, are you good at dual wielding? Is that your... Okay, he has two weapon fighting. Credit where credit's due. I was a little concerned that he had two weapon fighting. And he has heavy armor proficiency. Damn. Like, dude is set up. He's got power attack, power blast. He is deep in blaster pistol specialty. He immediately has rank three of it. And then he can try, he can technically do some stuff. He can technically use melee weapons and he has power attack if I want to give him melee weapons. And with his heavy armor, he could be up, he could be up front with heavy armor and using two weapons and being my, being my big bad tank. So he could be really useful for that. But he's got this big bonus for blaster pistols. I probably don't want to throw that away. So I probably want to keep him with these weapons. So he starts off with Karth's Blaster, 2 to 7. So it does one more damage than normal. Same threat range. Ooh, balanced. So plus 2, plus 0 versus the 2 weapon penalty if used in the offhand. Don't we want to use it in the offhand then? Maybe I'm missing something, but like, he has an increased chance, yeah, if used in the offhand. This is offhand, right? Left weapon, I assume, is offhand. Plus eight, plus six. Yeah, so he'll, I think that should increase his DPS if it's in his offhand, if I'm correct. Unless the 
reduced hit still offsets the bonus of the individual weapon so much that's, that he gets into deep shit or something. I don't know, that's the interpretation I got. He's level 4 already, with 44 vitality. I have 12! My poor shitty little baby. Alright. I could see if I can get him some heavy armor. This is just light armor. I don't, he's the durable one. I should wear the armor. So I don't die. Because I am not in a good place. Alright, so now I have more defense at least. To make up for my total lack of health. Because I'm a sad little tiny baby person. Alright. Welcome to the equipment imp. I want to ask you some questions. Anything I can do to help a potential customer out. What do you want to know? You know anything about those escape pods that crashed here on Terrace? I heard a couple of pods crash down in the Undercity. I bet the crash sites have already been stripped clean by the Sith, though. Unless the Swoop Gangs or Dabix men got there first. Swoop gangs? What can you tell me about them? I don't have anything good to say about those swoop gangs. Zooming around on their swoop bikes, terrorizing the lower city like a bunch of animals. Things weren't so bad when the hidden becks were running the show. But ever since the rise of the Black Volker gang, <laughs> the lower city has been nothing short of a war zone. The Sith haven't even bothered trying to maintain order down there. And I heard a rumor that Davik's own people are having problems with the Black Volkers now. What do you know about Davik? Oh, Davik's a legitimate businessman, if you get my drift. Smuggling, slaving, extortion. Mm-hmm. They say he's a member of the Exchange, you know, the big intergalactic criminal organization. Hmm. Well, I've heard of the Exchange. Bad organization to cross. But if anyone has blockade-breaking ships, however, it's them. I have to pay them a protection fee every month, but it's reasonable. And I get most of my inventory through Davik and his suppliers. I'm just smart enough not to ask where it came from, you understand? Is Davik working with the Sith? Davik hates the Sith as much as anybody. The quarantine has put a real dent in his operations, too. But he's keeping a low profile as long as the occupation lasts. <laughs> Davik stays out of the way, and the Sith don't bother him. The swoop gangs could learn a thing or two from this tidy little arrangement, instead of always going after each other. I was wondering how you feel about the Sith. Uh, it's not smart to say bad things about the people in power, if you get my meaning. I just wish the Sith would ease up on the quarantine, though. They're killing my business. I can't say I like having them here in Upper City, but it could be worse, and we're still a lot better off than the Lower City, what with those swoop gangs and all. Every time somebody says swoop gangs, I have to stifle a laugh, because it just sounds so fucking funny to me. Oh... I need some general information on Terrace. Oh, you're one of those off-worlders, aren't you? Come to Terrace for a short business trip and end up stuck here because of the Sith quarantine, right? Oh, you can't be too happy. Trapped on an unfamiliar world and all. But Terrace isn't so bad, as long as you stay in the upper city. Just try to avoid the Sith. And stay out of the lower city. The swoop gangs are totally out of control. Even Davik's men are having trouble down there. Go figure, right? Everyone's everyone on the planet's currently playing Final Fantasy VII, and here I am playing another game about a city with these like two layers, one over the other, and so on. I'll be going. Good day to you then. Uh, remember to come back to my shop if you ever need any supplies. I like the little mm-hmm in the middle of that one comment. <laughs> the dialogue is. Like, there's elements of it that's like it's a little stiff and a little dated, but other, but some characters are actually like really natural and come across pretty well. All things considered for a voice acted game of 2003. Don't bother me, I'm here on official Sith business. Hello, not Stormtrooper. It's actually a pretty cool costume design. I got, I dig it. I dig it! Here's the cantina. There we go. We're in our explorative phase, phase at the moment, checking things out. It's actually, I didn't really plan it this way necessarily in advance, but yeah, like I'm going to be playing KOTOR, and then up next in the other time slot's going to be Jet Force Gemini, so like, it's this is just going to be revisit Keith's childhood month, which I mean, fitting. Let's say it's a birthday present to myself, because I just turned 30, 
And it's like the next the next game choices in most of my time slots are roll me kind of looking back at that point to some stuff that I played when I was ages like eight to thirteen. And in both cases, I think are games I haven't I didn't beat the first time around, and I would like to the arena monitor. There's no action in the duel ring right now, so the monitor's blank. Garuk. Hello there, youngster. You interested in buying the Pazak deck of an old man looking to get out of the gambling game? Just 50 credits and I'll sell you all my cards. I'll even throw in a free lesson to boot. It's a great deal, if you can afford it. Oh god. Y'all motherfuckers ready for Gwent? Who are you? My name's Garuk. I used to be a card shark. One of the best Pazak players in the Outer Rim. But that was before I retired from the gambling life. You're giving up gambling? Why? Don't get me wrong. The game's been good to me over the years. I've traveled the span of the galaxy, from the core worlds to the farthest reaches of the Outer Rim. I've won countless fortunes, and lost countless more. But that was long ago, and things have changed. Gambling is a young man's game. That's why I'm looking to get out. My offer still stands. 50 credits gets you my old Pazak deck and a free lesson. A great offer if you can afford it. I want to ask you some questions. You know, my go-to. Of course, of course. My mind isn't as sharp as it used to be. That's why I'm giving up the gambler's life. But I think I can still manage to answer some simple questions. You know anything about those Republic escape pods that crashed down the Undercity? I spend my days here in the cantina, sipping ale and chatting with the folks who wander by. I don't have much use or care what goes on outside these walls. I don't see much point in worrying about that kind of stuff now that I've given up the gambler's life. Is there anything else I can do for you? Yep. You ask the same questions all the time to these different people, but you get complete. You, you get- you learn more about the character themselves than the answers a lot of times. We also immediately have our context for what's going on here. Like, we land on the upper city, where things are pretty alright. Nice tutorial zone for me to get my footing as I figure out who the hell I am and also how to play the game and stuff like that. But Bastila and any other survivors apparently all landed in the Undercity, where the Sith and Swoop gangs would have immediately taken the, uh... Taken the uh, pods apart for parts and gone after anyone inside for who knows what hostages, captives, maybe slaves. Figure some way to profit off of whoever has fallen victim. Although someone like Bastila might have immediately taken care of herself and ventured off on her own and fought off anyone that came after her if she's a Jedi, assuming she was conscious. Of course. I want some general information on Terrace. Mm, don't know what I can tell you that would be of any use. The upper city is nice enough, though it was better before the Sith showed up. But they don't bother an old guy like me much. Don't know much about the lower city. It's rough down beneath. I just stay up here where it's safe and mind my own business. I don't see much point in worrying about that kind of stuff now that I've given up the gambler's life. Is there anything else I can do for you? No, of course, of course. No sense in a youngster like you wasting your days away with an old man in a dingy bar. But if you ever want to chat, you know where to find me. I didn't have an option to buy the deck anymore because I kind of wandered away from that direction. I have 78 credits, so I actually can buy the deck. And boy, do I not remember how Pazak works. In fact, I think... I think I didn't get it, honestly, as a kid. Like, I think it was like, ah, weird math cards game without no pictures, no theming. This, is, this isn't Yu-Gi-Oh. This is... weird. I, it might have been too... it also might have been too close to normal gambling as opposed to, like, a card game. The way that I would have hoped for, like a, like a collectible card game. It's definitely, definitely not Gwent. But I think you do have to collect them. 
Let's see if we can figure this shit out. Hello there, youngster. You interested in buying the Pazak deck of an old man looking to get out of the gambling game? Just 50 credit. Sure, I'll buy your deck. Glad to see you're interested in the grand old game. The rules are pretty simple. Here, I'll load them up into your data pad so you can check them out anytime you want. Good luck. I hope the game's as good to you as it was to me. Now, is there anything else I can do for you? Of course. Journal entry added. So let's go check out that journal entry before I go too far. Let's see if I can figure this, this game out. Let's see. Options, map, quests, quest. Oh, Pazak rules. Here we go. The object of the game is to have your face-up cards total higher than your opponent's hand without exceeding a total of 20. So blackjack. If a player's total is greater than 20, at the end of a turn, a bust, the opponent wins the set. A player must win three sets to win the match and collect the wager. Bazak is played with a 40 card main deck up to, uh, uh, made up of four of each card numbered 1 through 10 and a side deck of up to 10 cards with values ranging from minus 6 to plus 6. Each player draws four random cards from their side deck to form their hand. These cards are available to the player for all of the sets of the match. Each hand card can only be played once per match. The first player draws a card from the main deck and plays it face up to begin their turn. After drawing a card, see draws a card for the main deck and plays it face yeah after drawing a card a player has the option of playing one of the cards from their hand playing a card from the hand is optional only one hand card can be played each turn remember a player's four card hand must last through all sets of the match a player now has the option to stand or end turn a player who stands cannot draw again or play any more cards from their hand during the set when one player stands, the opponent can continue to take turns until they either stand or bust. If a player chooses to end turn, they will automatically draw another card at the beginning of their next turn. After one player chooses to stand or end turn, the opponent draws a card to begin, uh, begin, uh, to begin their next turn. Players continue to alternate turns until both players choose to stand, or one player ends a turn with a total greater than 20, a bust. Remember, you only lose if you are over 20 at the end of your turn. A player can draw a card from the main deck that puts them over 20, then play a negative card from the hand that brings them back under 20. So you can still save yourself. You don't instantly lose the moment you go over 20, like the like in Blackjack, where you lose the moment you go over 21. In the case of a tie, another set must be played. No new cards from the side decks are drawn. A player can never have more than nine cards in play during one set. This includes cards from the hand as well as cards dealt from the deck. Once you have nine cards in play, you automatically stand. That seems statistically unlikely. A plus or minus card played from the side deck must be declared as a positive or negative when played. So there's ones that are both. Once played, it cannot be changed. The first player to win th uh, three sets wins the match and the wager, so it's best three of five. So ultimately, it's mostly blackjack, but it's blackjack with a slightly different total, because it's 20 instead of 21, and different cards that are worth kind of different numbers. But it's also like a, bl it's like a blend of blackjack and Gwent. Because much like Gwent, you have a hand that you draw at the beginning of the match, and then you have to win X number of rounds overall while using largely the same hand, which means that you're, you're rationing out your resources ultimately from round to round in order to like you, you, there's a there's a risk reward of like do i want to put all my resources into winning this round or do i want to hold on to them because they might come in hand in hand but they might come in handy better later in future rounds and so on and so forth back again is there something old garuk can do for you or did you just come to chat with a lonely old man i'd like a pazak lesson before each, yeah, you select 10 cards, wait, you must select 10 cards to form your side deck. Four of these cards will be randomly drawn to form your hand. Okay. Each Bazak has 
two of each card numbered plus one to the plus five to sell to create the side deck you will find other side deck as you've played knights of the public and with values ranging from plus or minus negative one to negative six uh yeah so that's the collectible part is that as you play the game the real ga the main game not pazak you actually can find more side deck cards to make you more powerful at pazak which is where another thing that makes this more gwent like Select 10 cards. Well, I only have 10, so yeah. Oh. There we go. Are you sure you want the side deck of the only cards available? Yeah. Alright, so I got a I got a plus one, one, two, and three. I can only add, I cannot subtract. This is obviously immediately a bummer that I can't reduce my number. So at any point, I can just draw over 10 and be fucked as a result. Because the, the, uh, there's so much variability. The cards are 1 through 10, and there's 4 of each of those numbers. And if you count cards, maybe you can be clever, but I'm not, I won't generally do that. But uh, yeah, if you can just draw a 10, that means you can be like, I have 11. Maybe I'll risk it. Oh no, I drew a 10. Fuck me, I instantly lose. I'm already, I'm already at 21. And your uh, your hand of pluses can't save you from that. So I need to I want to find those plus and minus cards if I want to get better at this. The object of the game is to have your face up card. Do, 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 do. This is mostly what we already saw. Bust. Yes. It is, we already know this stuff. The first player draws a card. It's done automatically. If you're after drawing a card, this is the same tutorial again. Shit. <laughs> So, X is play a card from my hand, which would be a weird thing to do now when I only have a plus two. A is end turn, Y is stand. So if I stand, I'm saying that I'm staying at that number. End turn means I'll draw a card again. It's a little, only just a little tiny bit counterintuitive because the word end makes me think I'm stopping. But it's actually just go to next turn as opposed to stand, which is actually stopping. So let's just end turn. Yep, so he'll draw a card. I drew a 10. I drew a 5. I have no reason to be adding to my total, right? Oop. So he has a 17. The best I can do is play a 3 to tie with him, which is not great. I'm currently losing this round. So... My cards can't help me tie- I can only help me tie with him. I can't- I can't secure a win that way. So I should just draw another card, because I'm already losing. If I'm lucky- oh, he just- alright, he busted, so I win. If a player's total is exactly 20, they automatically stand. The opponent can continue to play until they stand or bust. Ah, This guy's got a badass deck. Also, hey, motherfucker, I thought you just sold me your deck for 50 credits, but here you are with better cards in your deck. Can I- what the fuck? I thought I just bought your deck. This guy just conned me. This guy just ripped me the hell off. I just paid this guy 50 credits to get like a fucking Yu-Gi-Oh booster pack off the shelf that has nothing to do with his actual deck. And he's got his super cards right here where he's like, BAM! Minus four! You don't have one of those, do you, loser? I'm like, what? You- you just ri you're a ringer! You just tricked me! You just overcharged me for one booster pack, and now we're gonna get money off of me after conning me into a tutorial match. Nah, he's probably not gonna- I'm probably not gonna lose any money, because this is a little, little training sh session, but I'm, I'm like, what? Why does he have super cards? This is some dumb nonsense. Alright. Well, I can't win unless I tie with him, but spending a card to tie with him seems kind of... stupid? Although giving him a win is also not a great idea. I don't know, if I let him win, he's down one, he's down one card but has one of his three wins. Whereas if I, get, if I spend my plus two, he doesn't get a win and I nullify his progress. I essentially null- yeah, maybe. The set is tied. A match continues until one person has won three sets. Five. Six, nine, fifteen. 
All right, let's see if I can go over or not. Fuck me. All right, well, we tried. I can't play anything to fix this, so... When you select end turn, you will automatically draw another card. Yeah, starting next turn. Remember if you're... Yep. No, I already lost. I'm fine. Yep, he wins. Fifteen. Let's play the... This is probably not a great idea. But I'll play the plus three. And then stand. But watch him just kick my ass anyway. I mean... Uh, Alright, so he's got twenty. Because he played a plus four. He's, he's got a distressingly strong set of cards. I've never... I'm never good at this stuff. I'm gonna say end tutorial. Oh! End tutorial means end match, apparently? Oh. I just wanted the pop-ups to go away because they kept re-explaining the stuff I already understood, but I wanted to finish the match. Sorry, everyone. Don't you just love watching the Pazak players? All that strategy. All those credits. It's enough to make a girl get all flushed. Are you okay? Are you, are you okay? What do you want? Have you come here just to bother me, or do you wish to test yourself against the best Pazak player on Taurus? <laughs> Who, who are you? My name is Niklos. I'm the unofficial champion of the Pazak circuit here on Taurus. If you don't mind losing your wager, we could play a few hands. No. If you ever wish to test yourself against the best Pazak player on Taurus, you know where to find me. Oh, there is a non-zero chance that I might actually, like, go conquer the Pazak tournament here while we're on this planet. But, pretty sure I need, like any cards first before I go after the so-called champion. That's a great way to me lose the money I don't have anyway. Mm -hmm.